Good afternoon and welcome to The Road to Recovery, The Road to Freedom with Mark. This is my 28 minute show on Friday afternoon. So yes indeed it is the afternoon on the time of my doing this recording and um, it's nice to be back. I'd like to say a big hello to all my friends in the Wire Rapper and the good folks up in the Hawke's Bay. I hope things are going well for you and it's not too hot. I was absolutely melting the other day. Um, but we've been very, very lucky over my way in Pahi to it. It's extraordinarily green. The weather's been very, very kind to us this summer and um, the cattle are looking in absolutely fantastic condition, knee-deep in grass and glossy and big. I was looking at this Hereford the other day, big as a barrel, amazing-looking creature, and, you know, they look... So, so fine at this time of the year when they're well fed and well looked after and well watered it's, it really is a privilege to live in the countryside a lot of people don't understand why I live there but um, you know talk about green and pleasant land it, it really is something um, uniquely special I mean okay you've got to put up with a few hillbillies but uh, it certainly is a wonderful, wonderful part of the country to live in. I am very privileged in that regard. Now, my show is about mental health issues. And that's kind of why I mentioned living in the countryside. I I find it very good for me um, to be away from the chaos of the cities and the distractions of smartphones and supermarkets and everyone trying to tell you don't miss out don't miss out oh it's a bargain 60 months interest free you know unfortunately all of these distractions are there for us and none of them make us any happier in fact a lot of them um lead us down that path of depression if you're always poor and your financials are out of control and you're always struggling uh, it doesn't help to have all these things around you all of the time because they encourage selfishness laziness um slackness slack financial management um ill discipline they positively encourage things like this and that's very unfortunate and it's not so much the things that happen it's the things that don't happen those are the things that we don't notice those are the things that slip by without us being unaware and it does affect us it does affect us dramatically it affects all of us and it affects our mental health things like banging on about COVID on and on and on and on and on every single day they just won't shut up I've had a gut slowed personally I've had enough of people going banging on is there no other information is there nothing else going on in the world are we so focused about one single thing that we're distracted so much by that that we're blind oblivious to everything else going on around us there are a lot of good and positive things happening in our country and in our world but there is no focus whatsoever on them um good thoughts at the end of the news two minutes worth of jolly feelings and that's it the rest of it it's just sick you know it's not news It's titillation for the masses. It's ghoulish entertainment over somebody else's suffering. Like that poor girl that got strangled. Her family didn't... Grace, I think her name was. Her family didn't need what happened to them. The media circus. Her name dragged through every tiny, horrible, disgusting detail laid bare before the general public. To me, that's not news. That's not information that's that's just society sickness poking at a dead body with a stick i mean we're better than that surely we're better than that surely we can allow people a a a bit of respect and and a bit of kindness and, and a bit of thought in their death 
Yeah, and do we really need to see that? Do we really need rapes and murders and car crashes and horrible things happening to people? These are the first things that come on television and they wham them up and the camera loves disaster. Where's the news? Where's the, the information? You see, information is power. Not knowledge, information. And by keeping information from us, we are being disempowered. We simply don't know. We're being kept in the dark. What's happened to the price of oil? Well, it's halved. In fact, it went down 75% and the worst of COVID. And now it's at 50%. But have the prices gone down? No. The government talked about competition. Well, competition came initially, and I still support them. They were 10, 15 cents lower when they initially came into the market. Now... Mate, you can throw a blanket across them. There's no more than two cents difference. Sometimes one, sometimes none. And you've got to serve yourself now. So, you know, what happened to this competition? What happened to the information on the price of oil? If we're better informed and the news is telling us, oh, you can expect, you know, the price of petrol to go down by 20% because um, the price of oil has crashed, then things are out in the light. We are informed, we are empowered, and pressure goes on to those companies who are basically just ripping us, gouging us, using a pandemic as an opportunity to cash in and make extra profits off our backs. And the price of petrol and diesel affects every single aspect of our society. It affects transportation, it affects food, it affects the price of petrol because it costs diesel to get the damn stuff there. It affects everything we do, not just our running costs to take the kids to school and back and get to work and all that jazz. And we are being ripped badly. Now, there are good things that happen in our country. Of course there are. It's good to see the minimum wage being pushed up. I was absolutely shocked to learn the other day that the minimum wage in the south of um, the United States is still $7.25 US. Now, if that was the case here, there'd be people living under bridges because the cost of living has just gone way too high. The housing market is out of control. And a solution must be found to get roofs over people's heads without making them absolutely flat broke. Poverty is our greatest enemy and it creates all kinds of mental health issues when people are under financial stress and struggling. When they can't buy their kids shoes, you know, this is wrong. We all know it's wrong and yet there's more than enough to go around. The top percent, ten percent have way too much and the bottom 30% have way too little. So all we need is a balancing out. There's no magic wand. We just need to tax the rich a little bit more, and they wouldn't have a problem with that. Plenty of rich people will admit they make way too much money and they pay no tax whatsoever. None. So there's the disparity and there's the problem and there's where the dough comes from. It's a simple solution, really. It just needs to be a little bit more of an even spread and we will see the amount of mental health issues start to melt away because there's less poverty, there's less crime, there's less suffering, people aren't struggling and queuing at the food banks. No way should this be happening in a country as rich and supposedly as good as this. And I believe that it wouldn't take a hell of a lot to make people's lives just a little bit better. We need to be a little bit more understanding, a little bit more thoughtful, a little bit kinder to each other. What I would love to see come out of COVID is when people get the flu, they wear a mask when they go out on public transport in places like supermarkets and people like me looking at them in the eye, nodding and saying thank you because they are taking the time to protect not so much themselves but others. So if this could become a norm, if we could learn, because this information has come to us now about how diseases spread when people sneeze and cough, when they touch their mouths and then touch things on the shelves. These are how diseases are spread. And now that everybody can understand this and the importance for washing hands, 
we need to keep this campaign up to keep people safe because it's not just COVID that kills people. Influenza kills way more people than COVID ever did and influenza is constantly at us every single year. So if we can do more to protect ourselves and the poor old folks in old folks' homes, we don't go in there if we've got the flu without wearing a mask. And then I would suggest we shouldn't even go. If you've got the flu, you shouldn't be visiting old people's homes. You know, these people are vulnerable and sick and about to die. The last thing you want to do is bring disease in there. So it's just about having a little bit more consideration for other people. And that's the hurdle that we have to get over. Get away from the selfishness of cities, of this, it's all about you, it's all about you. Fear of missing out. Have it now, you've got to have it. And all this fear and greed. This is this is the beauty of the latest advertising campaigns. They used to use just greed. Now it's hurry, 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 don't miss out. Now they've combined greed with fear, the fear of missing out. It's FOMO. They've even created a word for it, the fear of missing out. What are you really missing out on? You're missing out on getting fanged, getting ripped by somebody for something that you don't even really need. If you fear that, then you're a fool. We should call, we should call it the foolish fear of missing out, because that's all it is. You're not really missing out. There isn't a hell of a lot in this world that you couldn't live without. Maybe food and water. That's about it, really, you know. A pair of shoes is nice, but really, how much does one need to be happy? Where does happiness come from? From possessions, from belongings, from status symbols? No, that's just... It's just boldness. It's just showing off. It's just greed and selfishness and indifference towards others. Happiness comes from people. People who care about you. And I don't have a hell of a lot of those left. I lost my mum last year and this is the first year I never got a birthday card and that's why I didn't turn up last week. I kind of got really depressed about the whole damn deal. And... You know, mental illness is one of those things where things can sneak up on you, things that you never really expected. But like I said to Michael not not that long ago, silence can sneak up on you, things that you didn't think about before they actually happened, and they can be small things. But they can have a hell of an effect on you. They can really knock the legs out from under you, so... You know, really what I've found over, especially the last few years, is that in order to get myself balanced again, get myself right, it's important not to dwell on negative thoughts. Sometimes when it's quiet, when it's silent, those are the time when these pervasive negativity starts drifting in like a fog and overwhelms you, surrounds you, and overtakes you. And it can be a gradual thing. Whereas, distracting yourself temporarily with positive things, getting out, clearing your head, it's a good term, I like that term, I go for a walk down the river every single day now, rain or shine, and... I just find that being in that place takes me away from sitting at my table, looking at all the things in front of me, all my worries and troubles, to walk away from it completely and do something that's a little bit positive. You know, throw a fly out there and try and catch a trout and get lost in that moment of positivity. And by holding negative thoughts at bay for some time you can allow them to dissipate like a wave so that when you do come back um just say to yourself enough of this shit and pack it up and put it away for a little while and then try and plan on a time when you're actually going to address it get in the right frame of mind if you're already frustrated and angry when you hit your problems the chances of solving them are probably halved. Whereas if you're in the right headspace of, okay, this is where I am, that's where I need to be, how do I make these progressive steps? And if you find yourself getting fired up and angry, stop where you are 
and walk away again and go and do something else that you like doing. But it's about engaging in positive activities that will take you away from the negativity because it can feed on itself and you go down, down, down the gurgler with negative thoughts and, and those negative thoughts can then become self-destructive. You become critical not just of others but of yourself and the whole thing can just swirl into a crazy storm of frustration and anger. And all that's going to do is damage you and you know that but you're so bloody angry. When I was young I used to just explode. You know, I've broken both of my hands smashing pieces of wood just out of sheer frustration and anger at, at the mistreatment, injustice and unfairness of certain things. It's very important to breathe deep. Take some time, and breathing is actually one of the very, very, very important things. If you can take some deep breaths, clear your mind and be calm, your breathing can have a good effect on First your body and then your mind. Calm your hands from shaking. And purposely drive yourself towards a calmer, better thought. Do something like ring up a friend you haven't talked to for a while and find out what's going on with them. And distract yourself completely in something far more positive. Go and work on your car if that's what you're into or plan a fishing trip or do a positive thing even if you have to create that positive thing. Like I say, plan a fishing trip with your mates and for a few months time or think of some amazing trip that you'd like to do and start planning it all out. And once you've got a role on that positive thing, you can put that aside Deal with your issues and problems and give yourself a limited time. 15 minutes, that's it. Leave it. And go back to something else that doesn't piss you off so much. And it's amazing how well it works to just completely get away from things because I tend to churn over things and look at them from all different aspects. And I often find I keep digging up the same stuff over and over again. And that, becomes very destructive so dealing with things for a short period of time and one at a time instead of all at once you know that's how you eat the elephant one bite at a time you don't try and solve all your problems in a single day because it's never going to happen you're going to get annoyed frustrated fall over and probably give up so yeah one thing an achievable thing at the time and it's the same deal with setting goals for yourself and trips and things. Don't shoot for the stars and make it impossible. Make sure that it is achievable. And I'm not saying don't make it ambitious. Just make sure that it is actually achievable rather than a pie-in-the-sky dream. It's never going to happen. You're going to let yourself down and, again, be annoyed and frustrated. Whereas... If you know it's achievable for sure and you've worked out the steps, you can progressively work there. And once you get to that point, the feeling, the euphoric uplifting of having achieved, having set some goals and achieved it, is such a good thing. It's a solid foundation on which to build. Success, therefore, breeds success. And failure, yeah, well, that only leads to more failure. So... It's clear which way you've got to go, but small things first. Smaller things lead onwards to bigger and better things, and they are bigger and better things. You know, I've had some wonderful achievements um, in these last few years, although they've been terribly trying times and I've had a hell of a lot of setbacks. I've still managed to achieve a few things and... I seek solace and, and I even celebrate to some degree the achievements that I have made. So I can see that there is some progression and that's why my show is called The Road to Recovery because it's a road of many steps and sometimes I take one forward and I take about a half a dozen back. And 
it's tough. It's tough to keep going or to get up. Sometimes you just got to take a little bit of a break, sit down and have a smoke and then charge on again, you know, get your second wind. So it's all about working with yourself, not necessarily being gentle with yourself. Just don't be so tough on yourself sometimes because... I always find my worst enemy, the worst enemy in the world that I have, is me. <laughs> and weirdly enough, I'm also my own best friend. So it's kind of like Mr. Happy and Mr. Sad both reside in the same body. And it's trying to find my friend in me who says, hey, mate, you know, you're not perfect, but at least you're giving it some. And I can't ask much more of you, but don't fail if you can't, you know, <laughs> if you can, do a good job. And I like to think of myself as, as um, a very professional, thorough, disciplined person in many ways, certainly in the things I like. You notice I hesitate because I'm not that way in all things, but in the things that really interest me, yeah, I... I take a lot of pride in what I do, doing it once, doing it right, measure twice, cut once, all those things that I was told in my life I try to live by. And as a result, it's very satisfying to see when you've done something very well and that's why I always appreciate well-made things when I see another craftsperson who's done something extraordinarily well I revel in the beauty and the talent and the dedication and the training. And if you learn to appreciate things like that, you get so much more out of it. I remember when I was in Europe and I used to go around all these museums and art theatres and things and I would always try and tack on the back of a group that had somebody explaining everything for them because without doing the research on each particular piece, be it the Rosetta Stone or the Bayon Tapestries or whatever, simply looking at it you can get a degree of depreci appreciation but if you know the whole story all of a sudden it enhances and enriches the experience and that's all about information. So being informed really enriches the experience and it's the same with life. Like I started out saying, if we're informed, if we know what's going on, we know what, what's happening with the price of oil, with the New Zealand dollar, with the share market, we know what's going on with our country, you know, we have a bit of positive news about things like housing. This is where we need to go. This is what we're achieving. This is where we're at. And if you're informed, truly informed, not with false news, but good, trustworthy, reliable news from excellent sources, you can trust that. You're informed. You're empowered. You know what's going on and you can make decisions and you feel like you're involved in society you're part of society and we are progressing together instead of you being on your knees begging for old bread that disempowers you when you are living hand to mouth and you have no prospects no future and you got kids and they're looking at you and you're their role model it's not a great role model and it's not a positive role model the role model that you should be is a positive one and it's not all your fault that it's this way. If you were better looked after, better informed, you had more money, you can look after people better. You get help with budgeting skills. People who grow food on trees, get around, pick it all, share it with people, engage and involve. People who are unemployed generally tend to get isolated. Each person living in their own little rabbit warren all separated out because it's easier to control them like that but if people get together and help themselves then they're not so reliant on institutions that are giving them the money and giving them the food if they've got community gardens and fruit to share and a cup of tea and friendship to share it makes life a hell of a lot better not just for the town not just for the individuals but for the whole country so that's what I want to see at the end of COVID. I want to see people wearing masks when they get 
the flu. I want people saying thank you to them for doing so. I want us to move away from all this consumption and greed and self-satisfying and thinking a little bit more about others, a little bit more kindness. This is what we were hammering all the way through this. Show a little bit of kindness. It costs you nothing. You know, this used to be a country renowned for having wonderful, friendly, good people. It's not so much now, and I want to see it get back to that. That's what we're trying to achieve here. Well, that's just about the end of my show. I normally read stories, but I've got a lot to say these days, so I hope you're able to keep track of it all. I know I go about 100 miles an hour on these shows because I'm always trying to squeeze so much in. But the main thing is that we look after each other and we look after ourselves. Okay, and I do mean look after each other. Take a bit of time, a bit of care and a bit of consideration. If someone's trying to get into the traffic and you're in a big long queue, let them in. And to the geezer who abused me for doing that last week, don't do that, please. I'm just letting a guy in. Okay, he's waiting. He waves, I wave, everyone smiles. And that changes things. It changes things big time. So that's what I'm hoping for is that we can come out of this better. We came out of the First World War and the Great Depression and the Second World War better than what we went in, and those were much worse disasters than this is. So I'm hoping that good can come out of a disaster, and I'm sure that it can. And I'm sure that we've come to realise that having businesses here and not relying on tourist dollars is a far more sound approach for a country like this so far away from everywhere else. We can look after ourselves and we can look after our people and it's our duty to do that. So I like to think that this year you do what you can. I encourage you to, to help those around you. Not just family, but strangers too. Just show a little bit of human kindness this year. It will be a really nice thing for me to see. It will put a smile on my face and make me feel better about myself and my country and my people. So that's what I'm hoping for. Last but not least, certainly not least, I want to say thank you to the sponsors of the show. It's very kind of you to front with, the, you know, pony up the dough to keep things like this going community radio stations always fly under the radar and people like michael and veronica here work selflessly very long hours and commit themselves to do something that they really believe in for the good of their society and their community for the good of the wire wrapper and the hawks bay and everybody in it you know we we send our love and our positive thoughts to you and this is what we're all about community people cooperating, working together, ordinary people talking to ordinary people in their communities and saying, hey, there are alternative views and you don't just have to eat the grill you're given. You know, there's other ways of doing this and we do it together. You know, don't expect someone else to come down from the mountain and show you the way. You already know the way. It's, it's all around you. It's the it's the people around you. That's all that really matters. So let's look after each other and see if we can't make this a good year. And uh, I'll try and make it back for next Friday. So it's over and out from me. Thanks and see you again. Bye for now. <laughs>